This video will look at program flow. Now, programming languages have statement, sets of statements to determine how to reach a goal. And the flow of these statements is controlled by three different structures, sequencing, selection, and iteration. Now, sequencing is just one instruction being performed one after the other in a linear fashion. Selection is where the program makes a decision so it might execute one of two pathways or two possible statements depending on a condition and iteration is where the program repeats itself so it might loop either for a set number of times or uh, whilst a condition is true now with sequencing as we've just said it's a control structure where a computer executes every instruction in the order in which they are written so here's an example of a program that uses sequencing and only sequencing. We input number one, we input number two, we then add those two numbers together, storing the re result in a variable called answer and then printing the answer to the screen. Every instruction there is in sequence, it's in order, it's going to be executed one after the other from top to bottom. So each line is executed before moving on to the next. Now with selection, this is where a program might make a decision and it's a conditional operation. So we sometimes want our programs to act differently when certain situations, certain conditions occur. And selection allows us to do that. It's a con control structure which contains instructions that do not have to be executed in sequence. It's non-sequential. There are two main types of selection. You've got an if else statement where there's two possible pathway pathways and you've got a multiple selection. Often that's used with a case statement where you could have one of many possible pathways. So if we look at an if then else statement, um, these are used to see if a condition is true or false. And if the condition is true, then a certain set of instructions will be executed. And if it's false, then a different set of instructions will be executed. So here is an example of the central heating program. Um, and you can see we've got two if statements. The first one, if the temperature is less than 19, then we either turn the heating on or we proceed to another if statement. And if the temperature is greater than 21, then we turn the heating off or we proceed around back to the start. Now, as said before, sometimes we might want m one of many possible uh, instructions to be executed depending on the condition. And in those cases, we use a case statement. Now, a case statement makes use of, in the case of, uh, to select one instruction from a set of instructions depending on the value of a variable. It does the same job as multiple nested if else statements, but it's more efficient. Now, Python doesn't really have a proper case statement, but this is an equivalent. And we're just saying that if the month is two, then we print one statement. Else, if the month is four or six or nine or 11, then we print another statement. Else, we print another statement. The idea here is that we could go on forever having many different um, else if statements. Um, so we can have multiple instructions um, written down and only one of those being executed depending on the condition at that time. Now when it comes to iterations, we sometimes want our programs to repeat a process until a condition is met or for a set number of times. So there's two ways to get um, our code looping, either counting a set number of loops or setting a condition which has to be met for a loop to end. So if we know how many times we want a loop to run for, we can use a for loop. So this uses a counter, which will repeatedly execute a block of instructions for a set number of times. And the counter can go up or down in different steps. And when it gets to the um, end value, then the loop will finish. So here is an example where we've set up a for loop We've got a counter variable which is going to count up to 10 and as it iterates through it prints hello world or even hello word 
strangely enough, should be world to the screen. So we could also set up a condition uh, controlled loop. So this is where we might not know how many times we want a loop to execute for. So we set up a loop to repeat until a certain condition uh, occurs. And we can use a while loop for this. So this states that while a condition is true, the code will continue repeating. The check occurs at the start of each loop. The instructions in the loop will be ignored if the while loop condition is false. So here we create a variable uh, and we assign it the value 10. And whilst count is greater than zero, which it will be to begin with, we print hello word. Again, it should be world. I did it wrong. We then take one off count and we loop round again. And count at this point will be nine, which is still greater than zero. So it prints hello word. We then take one away from count. Count is then eight. Eight is greater than zero. So it prints hello word. We take one away from count. So it becomes seven and so on and so forth. It continues to repeat until count is no longer than greater than zero. And as soon as it is no longer greater than zero, the loop will end. Now in most programming languages, not Python, uh, there is a repeat until loop as well which will repeat a block of code until a condition occurs. So this is where the check is at the end of the loop. So unlike the while loop, the instructions will always be carried out at least once. So we do the action and then we check whether we want to repeat it. 